Hello and welcome to another CLI Magic video. I think you'll enjoy this one. This is one of the better tricks I've come up with recently. Um, this, in this one, I'm going to explain how you can create a kind of stock ticker um, or any kind of measuring, stream measuring utility that will measure some kind of data and change the color and format of the text depending on whether it's going up or down. Uh, or changing in some way. So my example is that I'm, I'm using uh, the Mt. Gox exchange uh, data for Bitcoin, um, for Bitcoins to US dollars. Bitcoins are a virtual currency that has been created in the last couple years and I've become interested in, um, mainly because I was one of the early ones to generate a bunch of Bitcoins. So I've come back to it and gotten interested in it again. Uh, so it's pretty simple. I'm basically just going to use awk to create ANSI escape codes. Uh, ANSI escape codes can be used to create colors. You can read about ANSI escape codes on um, Wikipedia or just search for ANSI color. You'll see I searched for ANSI color to get here. Uh, and these are the colors that are used you'll see them all the time when you do like you know you do ls and you see how the different colors for the directories and um, different file types and and so on you know if you go into like dev you'll see a bunch of different um, colors background colors you'll notice that you can set the background color to black to green you know and so on so there's a lot of, there's a fair amount of different things you can do um, you also notice whenever you use like VI or Emacs to uh, edit a source code file that it will colorize the uh, the code so that it's easier to read. Um, some, you know, it's funny. The uh, it's funny. One of my previous coworkers I used to work with. Uh, a long time ago, this was like in 98, 99, he would always kind of frown at the use of color in the terminal. He said, he told me once, he was like, colors for pussies. And so this was back when color LS was just getting started. You know, they, they, uh, it wasn't pretty common. And, uh, you know, color syntax highlighting and Emacs and, and Vim was just starting to appear. So he would always make fun of me for that or, or just make fun of that uh, usage. But I think that color is, is very helpful because it conveys information on a different, you know, kind of on a different wavelength in your brain. So you can have all this data and color can quickly tell you uh, whether or not, in this example, whether or not something's going up or down. Uh, you can grossly misuse color like if you use too much of it then it's kind of an overload and you can't uh, really make heads or tails out of it if it's not used correctly but I think here you know this these are pretty obvious uh, examples of of color usage where I'm I'm using green to specify that some that something's going up and I'm using red to specify that it's going down and gray means it's staying the same so I mean most people would look at this and they'd, they'd be able to figure out what's going on. If I tried to use more colors, then it would just become more confusing. So try to keep the number of colors that you try to use in something like this to a minimum and you'll have better results. So what I'm doing to get this data is there's a channel on Freenode's IRC server that um, called Bitcoin-Market and it tracks different Bitcoin exchanges, uh, Mt. Gox is one of them, Trade Hill is another, and there's a few others. Um, and it tracks the real-time trades on there, so it's kind of interesting to watch. You can see what's happening as people actually trade Bitcoins. I'll just, I'm using XChat to actually log it. Yes, I'm using XChat. So what? <laughs> so here's what the log looks like. Uh, you'll see uh, it's kind of wrapped around here but you know the date this is who's posting it and uh, 
the date of the trade, the exchange, and you'll see there's you know there's a few a few different exchanges. And then this is how many bitcoins were traded and at what price. Um, and then what the currency is. So the currency could be a few different things, you know, Canadian dollars, US dollars, uh, I think they have Philippines and British pounds and euros. Uh, so there's lots of different things, lots of different types of data that you could um, work with here. So I am going to, actually I'm gonna go back. Okay, so I'll start out by tailing this and I'll just start with a simple part of this first. So I want to find anything that has Mt. Gox and is US dollars. Now I'm using awk here to actually do the search for the data instead of grep. And the reason why I'm doing that is because grep doesn't handle um, buff it doesn't handle piping streaming data very well. It actually buffers it and you wind up with it just sitting there for a while until it builds up a certain amount of data and then sends it out. Normally grep is used to seeing like end of line character, uh, end of file characters before, you know, wh whenever you run grep on something, you're giving it so much data and you're, or you're giving it an end of file marker. So you see the results right away, but when you're working with streaming data, uh, it gets held up and you sit there and you're waiting and you're like, why am, why am I not getting the data as it's coming in? Well, it's because it's buffering. Uh, this is a, you know, a, for me it's a big frustration because I try to show some examples that would be really cool, but then I run into the buffering issues with like grep and cut and um, and awk too. Actually, I should mention before I go on, the version of awk that I'm using here is not standard POSIX awk, it's actually gawk, so it's GNU awk. And I'm, I can call it as awk, but I can only do that because there's a symlink in Etsy Alternatives awk that actually points to US or bin gawk. So you should download uh, GNU awk or gawk and install that, probably, you know, your, um, your distribution probably has it available through a package. Uh, people who don't have access to GNU utils, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, I use Linux, and I'm not going to make any apologies to people who don't use Linux. I mean, you can find ways to, of doing these things on your platforms. I'm not really here to talk about the differences between the platforms. So, okay. So once you have G Gawk installed, you'll be able to do this. So search for Mt. Gox USD. This is how you search. You put um, your search term in between uh, slashes, and by default, it'll just search the whole line because um, we don't need to search a specific field. We could search a specific field, but I don't know. We could also say, like, if this field is equal to this and this field is equal to that, then we could do that. But, I don't know, for readability, I guess, this guy makes sense. Okay, so I am going to, here's where I start an escape code. And, I'm sorry, one, I'm looking at my notes as I'm doing this, so if I have to go back and forth a little bit, I'm, I apologize. Oh, God, it's USD. Okay, so this is going to require some explaining, <laughs> of course. Okay, printf is, is uh, you're probably used to using uh, just normal print with awk. If you're not, if you don't do much programming, you might not be familiar with printf. Printf is, stands for formatted print, and it's a way of organizing things into columns or, you know, um, you basically give it a, a format, which is what this is here. So this part in between the double quotes is the format. And 
you can use these escape sequences like percent %s to mean string. Uh, if you say percent %8s, that means I want a string that's uh, by default eight spaces wide or eight characters wide. And if you use a negative 8s, that means to uh, left align it instead of right align it. And you can do these different things. And so you give it a format, and then you give it arguments after the format that get filled into the uh, format escape codes. So the six column into awk will get put into this first percent s area, and this dollar eight, the eighth column passed into awk will get passed into percent eight s, and the eight there just means eight spaces wide. It doesn't have anything to do with the eighth column. And then the tenth column uh, gets passed into uh, this last one. And the si so the sixth column is the time, and the eighth column is the number of bitcoins, and then the tenth column is the price. So if I just run this real quick here, you'll see it starting to uh, you'll see it just print out everything in red. I haven't had any logic here. You know, you look over here and you might say, well, why is this one green and this one's red? Well, that's because I haven't added any logic to change the color. To start with, I just wanted to show you how the escape sequences work, and that's what creates the color red. This over here actually resets the color at the end of the line. This is important to do so that if you hit, when you hit control C, it doesn't actually continue to make everything after that red. Like if I took this out and I started it, then my prompt remains red. Even the control C character here that I pass gets is red. And now, you know, I have a red prompt. I have to, resetting should actually get you back to normal, but it's a little bit, it's just not very friendly. So getting back to here, it's important to actually put that, um, return the color, basically reset the color back to normal when you're done. Okay, so now what we want to do is add a little bit of logic so that we can change the color depending on uh, what the data is. And you have to bear with me here. Let me type this in first and then I'll explain. I think you can see why I'm not able to just post this tip to the uh, to the Twitter account or Identica for Identica users. Let's see. Okay. Okay. So probably I should start out by saying this is what this is kind of the logic that gets executed first so it's called last and it's basically just uh, I'm setting a variable called last that gets set to the last price that it saw so the first time this runs it's just it's not going to do anything in the logic except for hit the else clause um, and then once it prints it out, it's going to set the tenth column, which is the price, to last. That way, the next time it runs, then the logic will apply more. Um, I could do something like put, you know, I could put a last. Well, actually, awk doesn't really work that way. So. If this were a, a program, I would put like a, I would assign a variable outside the while loop. But since awk, well, there, there is a way to do it, but we'll skip that for now. <laughs> you can use a begin clause to actually do it, but we'll skip that for now. So there's always corner cases and everything that you have to think about. But, you know, some people like to really nitpick me on the corner cases that I don't cover in my tips and all I can say to that is you know most of the time it doesn't matter you know it doesn't really matter if there's a new you know how a few times I've been called out because I didn't cover that there was a new line in a file you know what to do if there's a new line in a file name and I'm just like 
I've been using Linux for 14 years and I've never encountered a new line of file name. And I've encountered some pretty crazy stuff. I mean, probably more so than uh, most of you. You know, I've, I've encountered directories that had two million files in it. I've encountered uh, files that from all over the world with different character sets and everything. And I've, I've uh, encountered lots of different things. And I've never seen a new line of file name except for when I actually created the file to test that that it actually worked. So I mean in common usage you never you know you just never run into some of these cases and I'm not I don't want to like make these big long tips that cater to all the different cases that uh, can potentially happen. I mean sure if you're writing a program for other people's usage and stuff like that you should cover all those cases and you should learn about um, stuff like find you know print zero and find and um, the dash zero option, xargs, and, and so on, and you know, make sure everything's quoted properly and stuff. But most of my tips are, are really, they're not for, so you can write a program, they're so that you can actually use the command line itself in new and interesting ways on your daily activities. And most people's daily activities just, they don't encounter new lines. So to the people who like to call me out, that's why I basically ignore, um, when you bring those things up, I, it's just I don't care. They're not they're not something that people run into on a regular basis, and it's just kind of a waste of time to think about them for the most part. I'm sure you're probably going to be mad, but you know I've been fine in years and years of using Linux uh, without handling those cases, um, and I totally understand about secure programming. I mean, I've written several programs that need to be completely secure. So I understand that when you're, you know, letting users use something and stuff that you have to uh, sanitize your data and make sure it's, it's okay for all cases. But um, most of the time, you just don't need to worry about it. Okay, so now that I've gotten that rant out of the way, <laughs> uh, moving right along... I'll probably end up editing that out. <laughs> okay. So, this basically, it's, it, so now when it encounters the next line, it's going to say, if the last value is less than the current price, then set the color to 32, which is um, red. Right. And if it's greater than the last value, then set to green, which is 31. And if, if it's not, uh, you know, if it's equal to the same value, if the price stays the same, then set to 30, which is gray. So now we'll run this and we got, just give it a second. Hmm. Oh, right, right, duh. <laughs> So I've set these values, but I haven't actually put them in the format string. So, so I, right here, I put in a double quote to end the, the string literal, and I put in my variable value. And, right? What's this B for? Okay. There. So that's that, and that matches, you'll see it, it matches the color that gets set. No, it's not matching the bold face and stuff, we haven't gotten to that part yet. Um, but it's matching the color, and that's how you do that. So, I mean, you could use this not just for Bitcoin price data, but for your, you know, stocks in general, or temperature, or, you know, time that it takes to do something, or, or something. You know, you have a... You have a stream of data, then you want to have a nice ticker or something that goes by. Maybe you're um, tailing the the phone logs or something like that, and you want it to show bold whenever an outside caller calls in or something. Uh, you could do this kind of stuff. Okay, so now that we've done the price, I want to also add a bit of logic for um, the other side, which would be uh, the volume. 
So whenever somebody places over a certain number of trades, it's going to make it either underlined uh, or it's going to make it bold if it's a lot more trades. So let me write this in. And I'm going to, yeah. I'll set this to the same values that are used over on this ticker so you can see what I did. So there's two different values that you can set in ANSI color code. One is for the color and the other one is for the formatting style. So the formatting style comes after a semicolon and is a number from 0 to 7. Uh, the color number can be from 30 to 40, but on uh, more advanced terminals you can actually have up to 256 colors. And I forget what the range of numbers is on that. Um, probably later this, uh, if you search for where I've done like a rainbow in your shell, uh, you can see the, the extra values. KD, uh, console, the con uh, KDE terminal console, it actually, I think, supports 16 million colors or something. There, it has some kind of special escape sequences that you can use. Um, but like I said, the more colors, the more problems, you know, you have with conveying your data. So... We'll run this now. And so now it's doing this so that if the volume data is greater than 10, it's going to bold it. If it's greater than 2, or so, you know, it kind of falls through to the end. So if it's greater than 10, make it bold. Else, if it's greater than 2, then make it underlined, which is kind of just a little bit of emphasis. And otherwise, just make it nothing. Um, and that way, you know, all these other lines are just normal faced. So that's pretty much it. Uh, that's how you can make a ticker. Right now it's not, you know, there's not a lot of trades going on being a Friday night. Um, people are out spending their Bitcoins on beer. So, okay, hope I, uh, if you do anything interesting with this, I'd be curious to see a screenshot or, or you know, just send the code back or put it someplace. Um, and maybe we'll come up with some other uses for this this type of uh, awk ticker. All right, good luck.